Uh, uh, let's see now. Angela is where today? Welcome to North Georgia now today. Does that look good? Yeah. It looks like Angela's in her seat. Guess what? She's not, guys. For the past where 48 years, the Barbie Barn know. has been North Angela Georgia's hunting and fishing action. headquarters. She really just we'll wanted to show y'all this great photo. That's pretty good. Now, Click It did this photo. Looks pretty good, doesn't it, guys? We also have it in black and white. For you folks who are having gardens this year, we decided we would offer you something that not everyone can offer. Not everyone has a scarecrow who looks like this. But uh, what you think about this scarecrow? <laughs> Good Friday to everybody. This is the time people are thinking about gardening, thinking about planting. What you think about that? I think, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Never be in charge of a blind deaf dog. <laughs> Do you forget? Gets lost in the woods. Oh no, you have been chasing. Oh candy. no, candy. We gotta tell y'all this story. This is so cool. That's why I see you text. I'm listen, on the way. Listen to this. Her ex morning. Her ex husband got on a plane yesterday, headed for Germany. Now he yes. was he was headed to Germany. Yes. The plane was headed to the tarmac at Hartsville, where it sat for hours and hours, hours. and hours. Yes. And when he left, he left Angela with the blind dog, the well, blind old dog. Yes, and the reason is because I was her mommy right. when we were married. Right, for t 12, yep. 14 years, you yep. were that dog's mommy. Mom. So, so today, how many hours have you been wandering through oh the woods? God, about 45 minutes. Uh-huh. And, and what did you tell the dog? If you don't get in here soon, she can't hear. I know that's the problem. She can't hear and she can't see. It's kind of like a man I'm looking for. And, <laughs> see, normally when I let her out at my house, she stays right at the back where Mystic goes. She smells, uh -huh. and I never worry about her. But I put her out, and then I got in the shower. Uh -huh. And when I came back dressed, she was gone, oh, and she no. can't hear. Oh, you no. have to like. Um, beat or make a really loud vibration for her to hear you. Mm -hmm. So she couldn't hear me yelling. So I had to go tracking through the woods. The poor dog was scared to death. She was shaking. She can't walk. We call her grandma. She's got hip <laughs> problems. And I'm God, thinking. Sounds like my knee and my hip's killing me today. I'm thinking Siggy's in Germany, Tori's in Kentucky, and I've killed the dog. <laughs> great. <laughs> this is a great Friday. So it was either. Oh my God, my mama's gonna kill me. <laughs> or them two are gonna kill me. Or I'll just shoot myself and be done with it. But you probably so, locked your gun in the house. <laughs> yeah, because you know, I do that kind of stuff. What so, color are your roots naturally? They're blonde. <laughs> so it was And a, you choose to color your hair because? <laughs> to try to fool people. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> so it was either a combination of y'all come to my funeral this weekend by death of one of the three. Or I just find the dog, bite the bullet, and come in two minutes late. And did you find the dog? I found her, and she was pitiful. Really? She was shaking and scared, and I felt like crap. Now, now the other part of this story is if her ex-husband wasn't so dadgum stingy, he'd have a fence for the dog. Well, she's too old, though. What you mean she's too old? She's, you can put me you know, in a fence and I can do it. She's, she's really got too many health problems now, oh. and that's why we can't board her, because she'll have a heart attack. In oh. the kennel. Yeah. Well, good. Keep that in mind when you think of putting me in the nursing home. <coughs> Say, yeah. I really don't want to board my mom because she might have a heart attack. <laughs> yes. I mean, she, you know, my house has a lot of stairs in it, and she even falls. I have to tote her up most of the stairs in my house. Oh, no. She's, it's really sad, but wow. she's getting to the point. I mean, she's still happy and everything, but mm -hmm. no, she was scared to death this morning when I found her, and she was shaking, and I was like, oh, my yeah, God. Why do you think she wandered? Because it was She got familiar. disoriented. Okay. She doesn't have all her senses. Right. And she just, she got lost. And I'm. Do we need to tell I'm the sad thank story God of the last dog? Thank God she's white. Okay. So. Do we need to tell the sad story of the last dog who wandered away? And you'll know why she is so paranoid about yes. this. I had a poodle that was my baby. He was a miniature poodle. He went blind. He lost his hearing. And. Um, when we had Tori, he got really, really obsessive, jealous of her. So we. No, that's an understatement. Yeah. He did not like that child at yeah. all. Couldn't stand the baby. He was my baby, baby. So my mother in law, Siggy's mama, took the dog in, and that way we kept him in the family. Well, long story short, we had him for about 16 years, which is really old for a miniature poodle. And he was deaf, blind, 
you know, all this good stuff. So whenever he went out to potty, you had to stay with him. Well, my mother-in-law had a nice pond in the backyard. Nice pond. Nice pond. My mother-in-law was very, very good to Sparky, and I appreciate that. Lord rest her soul in heaven. She's probably with him now. Oh, yeah. Siggy won't ever see him again, however, because <laughs> Siggy thought Sparky needed some fresh air. Well, Siggy, like me this morning, had a stupid moment. Forgot the dog's blind and deaf. Couldn't find him. It got dark. The neighbors found poor Sparky the next morning floating in the pond. He drowned. Sparky drowned, and I'll never forgive him for that. So You're not supposed to hold grudges. No, but when I almost killed his dog today, <laughs> my heart was palpitating. I'm like, Lord, I didn't mean it. I promise. <laughs> he killed mine, but I'll not kill his. Yeah. So, yeah. So Candy's fine. She's Your biking. nerves are a My nerves bit. are shot. <laughs> <laughs> but she's in the house. So Good. Yes. Good. Okay. Well, we have got a busy day. And Lord have mercy, them women yesterday. I've just got to say, I saw that again last night. Well, oh, oh, to say. Hello. <laughs> Aren't they awesome? I was blown away. They were awesome. Talk they, about your probation officers. Yes, yes. And I just, I said, Lord, I got to mention that tomorrow on the show because <laughs> them women were hot. You know, if I were their probation officer, part of the punishment would be she's going to sing to you. These ladies could sing like crazy. Hello. It was wild. Loud and, oh, just awesome It was voices. dead on, yeah. It, yeah. it was great. It, it was, was awesome. great. Were terrific. I had heard their CDs, and to be honest with you, the CD does not do them justice. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but. Well, I don't really jump up and down like you say that people do with the Booth Brothers. I don't really get, I mean, you gotta really knock me down for me to just get, woo! But those ladies yesterday were <laughs> woo. Yeah, so. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, last night we had a woo. You haven't seen the concert yet that we did in Hans' honor. I saw part of it. Well, we saw the whole thing in its entirety <coughs> last night. We had a premiere party, and we premiered mm -hmm. it, and we had a whole lot of people jumping up and down, shouting and, and saying, spaghetti. "Way to go!" We had lots of spaghetti, lots of pizza. Thank you, Pizza King. I happened to make my famous spaghetti, and everybody yes. loved it. They were wrecking that sauce was delicious. Mm, wasn't mm -hmm. it good? Yeah. And you know why we had spaghetti? The Blue Star had ground chuck on sale, so that's kind of well, what you determines know that our menu. That was on sale the other day. Oh, was I delicious. cooked it last night. Oh, wait till you taste what's for lunch today. Oh, I'm, I'm about done oh. myself this week. Yeah. So yeah. Well, we've got a couple of announcements, and then we're going to go to our first guest because we have a very, very, very special guest walking in the door about nine ten. We've got to be prepared for him. Okay, there's going to be a big gospel singing at Heritage Healthcare of Jasper on April the 5th, 2 to 4.30 p.m. It is hosted by Heritage Healthcare of Jasper. Tom Daniels and Bob Fleming will be your host. Now, Bob, I love you. Tom, I love you. But y'all are not near as good as Charlene. You should have asked Charlene Higgins to be your MC. Charlene is the best. And let me tell you something. Uh, we're going to put her on the road. We got the Barkers a driver now. So he's going to drive them to all their long away events and let them rest on the way and let them Who's rest the home. Who's the driver? Mr. Brackett. Yay. Yep. Yay. Uh -huh. And um, and so we just decided Charlene is the MC with the mo she's the mo hostess with the mostess. Mm -hmm. She is great, and and we just decided y'all should have invited Charlene to this event. Mm -hmm. This is going to be um, all church specialty group singers and listeners are invited. Come have finger foods and a drink and enjoy the music and singing. So if you have nothing to do on um, April the fifth, two to four thirty p.m., please join them. Now, I've talked about the Yellow Brick Road. Mm -hmm. We talked about how you were obsessed with Wizard of Oz. Nicholas yeah. was obsessed. It is a great, great memory of your childhood. Please continue to think about purchasing the Yellow Brick Road mm -hmm. um, in honor and memory or just because you want to help these kids out. Five dollars in the available in our offices here. Okay, grilled chicken dinner. Grilled chicken. Uh, grilled chicken, fried chicken. Uh, either one's good. I like grilled chicken dipped in barbecue sauce. Yes, me too. Grilled chicken, baked beans, coleslaw, rolls, dessert, and beverage. $6 donation, 11 to 2, Saturday the 11th at the Lodge at McKay Lodge number 423. Okay, here's a thank you. Thank you. Um, we had talked about Rusty Nails last week because Bill got to see them last week. I haven't seen them yet. But I understand Bill says they're awesome, and I kind of trust Bill's judgment. Yeah. Hey, he sent me to see the Booth Brothers. Think about yeah. it. And now I'm obsessed with the I Booth Brothers. I think he was impressed yesterday, too. He was blown away. You could away. tell. His, I mean, he was running you know down what, the name that roll you, on. You, you know? know what he said? He said, you'll end up promoting those ladies because you really liked them. I said, I oh, loved yes. them. They were awesome. Yes. 
Um, this lady says, thank you, Bill, for the comments about the singing last week. The Rusty Nails, they are all members of Silver City Baptist Church in Dawsonville, and their website is www.rustynailsbluegrass.com. So if you're interested in booking them to come to your events. Now, we gave you the Dickens and showed your picture for gardening, but let me tell you something. <laughs> if you've got a big garden, we've got your really big picture. If you have a big garden, you have a picture of the whole group. And if you've planted a 40-acre field, mm -hmm. the, these five scarecrows probably will take care of any garden known to I me. I thought that turned out to be a really great picture of us. You do? Well, it was bad hair day for me. My hair was flat as a flitter. Well, mine wasn't that great either, but it was just a good picture. <laughs> but we have to say thank you to Chad Crow for doing this yeah. for us. And we're going to be doing some meet and greets in the near future. We haven't been able to do any live shows. Mm -hmm. And... Um, um, that kind of has, I've been getting we some emails. We miss the in the food. Well, the people miss us, and I've been mm -hmm. getting some emails, so I decided I had Chad do these photos, and we're going to start doing some meet and greets. Now, I want to show y'all. This is everybody's favorite co-host. Everybody loves that Bill Senior whips me, gets me, tears me up, and I want y'all to see, at the live meet and greets, you'll get a photo of Bill. If that won't stop a garden problem, <laughs> nothing go. will. So... And here, here's... He giving you some hard songs yesterday. Here's my baby boy. Yes, he gave me some hard songs and I flunked. And I told the teacher that's on board today, I flunked yesterday. I made a 60. I don't like to make a 60. No. But anyway, this, this in the near future, as soon as the weather breaks, we have made arrangements to do some meet and greets. We will be all boarding up. The co-host will be getting on board. We may have to do it on Thursdays because that's Charlene's mm -hmm. day off. Mm -hmm. But we just decided we will, we will do this. We're going to spend some time out in the community with you. We we'll know that you love them. that. We're going to get some sponsors and we're going to just go out and we're going to um, meet and greet. And we're mm -hmm. going to be out there among the, among the folks who um, like to hang out with us. And we just decided if, if we can't do a full-blown live show, then we'll just mm -hmm. come and meet y'all, hang out with you, maybe have lunch with you. We're going to figure out... Well, you know if we're out, there's going to be food. Oh, yeah. And my head is turning yeah. now. Because now with people saying, why don't you do the live remote anymore? Why are, yeah. Well, we just haven't been able to. So uh, having this show and then the news coming right behind it, kind of one crew has to do it all. So yeah. we've got to figure out a way. Yeah. We're going to figure something out right now. Is that their CD? Yes. Did Has you want, that one did you want a copy of that one? Yes. Well, you can't have this one. We're giving it to, we're giving it to a viewer today. No, call in for me. <laughs> no, we're going to give that to you. Say, you can give it to Angela. <laughs> no, no, I'll get you one. We're going to be featuring the music of the Booth Brothers. So when we go to the weather, when we go to the community calendar, when we go Let's to anything. Let's feature back to Bethany, too. Well, we will. But listen, I'm telling you. I know. Listen, we got, a, good. we got a Booth Brothers concert coming up. I know. You know how much it costs to bring these boys to town? A lot. we got to fill the house up. So we mm -hmm. have to entice you with their music. Yeah. We have no choice. Yeah. They are the number one group in gospel music. So when we go to the weather today, we're going to Booth Brothers Music. When we go to Community Calendar, we're going to Booth Brothers. We're going to pump y'all up and make you love them as much as I do. And then we're going to encourage you to please come and see them on April the 24th. Jasper Singing Promotions brings great gospel music to town, and they are one more group. Now today, mm -hmm. we're going to give away, back to Bethany, we're going to give away Mike Bailey. We've had people, this is his pre-release. He's you, funny. I love that song he sang. He is so funny. We're going to give this away today, so pay attention to today's program. Right now, we're going to go to the weather, and when we come back, you're going to meet some ladies, a um, couple who are um, the teaching mode, a couple who are the learning mode, and we'll see. Do you think they can teach us something today? Of course. Of you course. Can we can something. always learn. Mm -hmm. Never give up learning. That's right. So right now, let's go to the weather and sit back and listen to the Booth Brothers.
Welcome back to North Georgia Now Today. Today is going to be a busy, busy full day because by 9, 10, we're cleaning the house for a special, special guest. Did you bring Lysol, alcohol, ammonia, the things we need to do to clean? No. Well, we should because we're going to have a guest here who's really, really important. So, ladies, let's get ready for literacy. Let's okay. talk about what it takes. If you decide all of a sudden you want a GED and you think, oh, I can never pass that test. What do you do to prepare for it? You come see us. We are Flag Adult Education. We're up in Fannin County. Mm -hmm. And we are set up for adults. We like to, to make people realize that this is not high school. There's no gym class, you know, uh -huh. no detention. Thank God. Have you ever seen those gym outfits? They're so bad, girls. They're so bad. So don't worry about that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, come see us. We do a little testing, figure out what you need to brush up on, mm -hmm. and we make a way for you to study. To, uh, to get that done. Now we said two are in the teaching mode, two mm -hmm. are in the learning mode. And right. one of them told me that one of the ladies here is her pastor's wife. Now their names are Lori Clayton, Melissa Hicks, Melinda Trim, back to Bethany. We're going to give this away, so pay attention to this interview because after the interview we're going to ask a question. Angela's going to cry when this leaves the house, but she doesn't know this. I have one hidden at my office. <laughs> so don't cry. Don't be a big girl. Don't cry. I was going to say, if you this win is, it, it's my birthday. Yeah, no. <laughs> so, no. Um, they are awesome musicians. Now, are you awesome at anything? Is there something that you excel in? Um, How'd you make it? <laughs> yes, I, I've always um, loved being in church and, and helping out there. So if I excel in anything, I mm -hmm. hope that's what it Everybody is. Everybody excels in something. Absolutely. I don't care who you are. Everybody, she is a great floral designer. I'm a great talker. I can't do anything <laughs> else. I can't sing. I can't make a bow. I can't design. But every single person God put on this earth has some talent. And what's your talent? Um, being a mother, I guess. See? That is a great talent. Well, Everybody does something well. And we talked about this earlier. Some people really, really test well. Mm -hmm. Some people are lousy at testing. Mm -hmm. Some That's people. Me. Yeah. You you know the info. Her daddy was a genius. Yeah. Absolute genius. It's guilt. Yeah. <laughs> no. It just <laughs> But but she panics. And uh, and that is uh, a big issue with testing, uh -huh, isn't it? Uh -huh. Yes. It now, how many times do people is there a pre G E D test? Yes, there is. Donna can tell you about okay. this. Donna's our lead teacher okay. uh, at Flag. Let's talk about the, the test that determines how much help they're going to need. Um, when a student enrolls at, in the program, they take the test of adult basic education. Mm -hmm. And that's our placement test. And it lets us know what um, the person knows, doesn't know, forgot, mm -hmm. and if there's any gaps anywhere. Um, and we base use the um, information from that to write an individualized study plan for each student. And then once those skills have been learned and we've retested and then we know that, that those skills are accomplished, mm -hmm. then we give a practice GED test so that they can make sure that they um, can apply all the new skills to mm -hmm. GED questions. Do you ever have somebody who just panics on you? We talked about the fact that this is a very long test. Yes, it is. It's a very it's long all day. test. Yeah. How, how do people... Do they come in and have you tell them be prepared, have a have a good breakfast, and be prepared to be there a while, or do they come in thinking, well, I'll get this over when they go have lunch, and then they're sitting there, oh no, you know. <laughs> For the GED test itself, mm -hmm. no. Students that have been coming and are regular students of ours, I go through no. what to wear, what to eat before you go, what to do the day before. Uh, we encourage students not to study the day before. Really? Um, just relax the and day see, before. see, I cram before a test. Do you remember when I took the real mm -hmm. estate test? Oh, let me tell you. Yeah. I have uh, nine dogs, five children, and a very demanding husband. <laughs> I walked in the house, walked in the hall that day. I remember it like it was yesterday. I said, I'm going in my bedroom. I'm studying. I don't want to hear a sound when your daddy walks in the door, fix him something to eat, tell him not to speak to me unless he wants his head bitten off. <laughs> I go in my office, I close the door, and I study. I crammed all night long. I don't think I test well if I don't cram. That's not good, is it? No, that's fine. Every person's different. And one of the things that I have found over the years is that um, a lot of adult learners don't know how they learn. And so that's a big part of what we do. It's not just facts and knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's knowledge about yourself as a learner and how you learn. Because we are hoping that the GED is just a step. Mm -hmm. That it's not the end of an education for anybody. Mm -hmm. That beyond that, students are going to go on to college or take 
classes at the folk school or take Bible study classes, they're going to be able to apply whatever they've learned about themselves as learners mm -hmm. into any learning situation. So part of that is what kind of tester am I? Let me ask you something on the pretest. <clears throat> if somebody takes the pretest and does great on everything except math, mm -hmm. um, and then they go back and they take the actual test and they didn't do good on the other things, do you ever see that happen? Occasionally. Mm -hmm. Occasionally. Like, like maybe it's, it's sometimes first, first impulse is you get the right answer. And sometimes if you analyze things, do you not do as well? Occasionally, but most of the time if someone has come in and done um, and tested at GED level on the test of adult basic education mm -hmm. and has passed the GED practice test, the official practice mm -hmm. test, usually unless something unusual happens, um, a student gets a migraine or something like that, usually their, their scores are going to be similar. Good. If they're borderline, they may, because of nerves, right. score below the line. Right. But usually if they've passed everything in the classroom, they're going to be prepared to pass everything on the real test. How okay. many times do you see people have to retest? If they've passed everything ahead of time, mm -hmm. not as often, not too often. Good. Not too often. But it, like I said, I mean, I've had students who got food poisoning, mm -hmm. um, who got migraines, who got panic attacks, and those things yeah. happen. That yeah. won't happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> those things happen. Mm -hmm. And you prepare as best you can, but there are sometimes things that happen, you know, that you're not prepared for. And, and don't let it make you give up. Well, you know? no. Oh, and you don't right. ever have to go back and take the whole GED test again. Mm -hmm. um, you just have to take the part that you missed again. That's good. So you pay for that part and you take that part again. And when are you girls going to take the test? Good question. I think I'm a long ways away. I have, math is my biggest problem. And I haven't been to school since the 80s, so it's it's hard, but they keep you motivated. You just started back full time yeah. as a student. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When are you going to take it? When Miss Donna pushes me out the door. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She could take it now, but she's working on nerves. <laughs> well, it... it you know, it's been almost uh, 40 years since I was in school, so, right. but Miss Donna is so good to help get us out of our comfort zone mm -hmm. and make us feel that we can do right. it, so it won't be long. <laughs> okay, what's it going to be like the day they say, hey, you aced this test? My kids are going to shout. <laughs> 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 They've been pushing for a long time for me to do this. That's awesome. Now, what will you do after you pass the test? Miss Donna and me were talking about that the other day. I'm not sure what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up and at 57 became a television person. <laughs> Actually, 55. But, you know, that's, it's, it's weird how sometimes as you get older in life, you see things differently. Maybe now you'll do something extraordinary that you might not have thought of when you were 17. So We're talking about college. Yeah, that's cool. That is cool. I always wanted to be a history teacher when I was younger, so we were talking about some other options, so I don't know. The well, Bill Senior did tell you if you followed me around, you'd get 100 years history. <laughs> <laughs> Now, can I ask both your ages? I'm 39. Okay. I'm 57. Okay. All right. So there's a you could be her mom almost. So there's there's a difference. And do you have people 20 who are oh, doing yeah. this? Yeah. Okay. So you have to be 16. Okay. Uh, or over that. But the oldest was what? 78. 78. 78. It's wow. never too late. Did they pass? Wow. Yes. That is they awesome. Did. That they is did. so awesome. Well, I was in. Um, Jasper one day and some ladies were talking about they had done it three times and it was some sisters and they had done it together three uh -huh. times mm -hmm. and waiting for all three of them to pass and I thought that was so cool and that was like 20 years ago but yeah. they just did it together because when they were kids mm -hmm. I think they went to seventh grade or something and it was back mm -hmm. years and years ago so yeah. um, and I thought that's so awesome that they didn't give up because they yeah, took it a absolutely. couple of times and then and freshened up a little bit and took it again right so. right um, I'm a child of the 80s, too. Do you <laughs> find that, see, math was my hard subject. Mm -hmm. what Actually, we, we learned, had tutoring for algebra yeah, over it's and awful. over. Do you see that the math that we had, the math that you're having to study now is is different yeah, and harder? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm studying things now that I didn't have back then. Right. And it's, it's hard, but like yeah. I said, they keep you really motivated. You know, all the students 
join together and it's really it's really good mm -hmm. they make it a lot easier mm -hmm. and sometimes do you think oh I don't know if I can handle this or not yeah. or do you go in looking forward to it I look forward to it every good. day good. right now I'm on fractions and that's oh, so yeah. hard <laughs> <laughs> but I've really learned I mean I have learned so much since have. I have started there I really have yeah. and, and it really makes me feel good inside about myself mm -hmm. so I want to go to college when I'm done and I want to work with old people mm. so, awesome yeah well it's funny because today's high school graduates oh and I can tell this because it happens all the time I'll say, I'm going to give you $5.36. Can you give me back the change? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, okay. <laughs> you know? and, and sometimes we have made the world easier than my generation because we didn't have those cash registers who told you what to give back. Mm -hmm. And I've always said common sense is a very valuable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Very valuable. Your daddy was a perfect example. <clears throat> he was a genius, but he didn't know to come in out of the rain. <laughs> and, and that's true, isn't it? I mean, he was a genius, but he, you know, okay, it's raining, let's get an umbrella, or let's don't stand out here. But, but it is funny because common sense goes a long way, too. Do you mm -hmm. find if they have the common sense, it's easier to teach them? Oh, yes. Absolutely. Yes. I, I taught 11 years in um, kindergarten through middle school, and those kids are little and they don't have common sense uh -huh, yet uh -huh. you know they um, and teaching adults the majority of whom may not have skills right. they may not remember how to multiply fractions uh -huh. but they have great common sense and right. life experiences right. yes. Yes. and they have bought refrigerators uh -huh. and they understand about interest you just have to teach them how to put it on paper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they have you know, wonderful common sense and are really good at problem solving a lot of times. That's you just great. have to show them how mm -hmm. that ties in with the question on a test. Now, how long is the course your girls are taking? Is it two weeks, six weeks, eight weeks? Is there a time frame? As long, long as it needs to be. Okay, right. okay. It's now let's talk about fundraising because okay. it looks to me like you need to raise some money. We do. Yes, we do. How are we going to raise money? You know, I'm the expert at raising money. Are you? Yeah, oh, good. Oh, okay. Tell us how to do oh, it. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's my that's my calling. God gives everybody something. I have no talent. <laughs> that is a talent. You're very talented. You're yeah, a good right. Cook. <laughs> yeah, you can get her done. I can't get her done. <laughs> See, these classes are free to the okay. student. Uh -huh. The only thing that costs is the exam itself. But you can come in and you can study with us. And uh, so we need to pay teachers. We need to pay. We need to get the books and the materials that they need. We need to pay the phone bill. So we need about fifteen thousand dollars this year uh -huh. to do that, and we okay. get it from donations from people in the community. And uh, we're about a third of the way there. So we do need uh, donations for that. Do you have fundraisers? We do. We send out um, um, letters and we talk to people all. All you know, this is the time of year when we do mm -hmm. that. Have you ever letter? had a gospel singing? No, we haven't. <laughs> well, you want to come sing for us? No. I I can get. I hear that. <laughs> we'll talk I about that. I would pay to hear those ladies. We'll talk about well, that. Well, we need to do something that will involve the whole community because mm -hmm. not everybody is even aware of this. Mm -hmm. That's okay. true. Now, Especially that it's a free service. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I had no it idea it was free. I thought you paid tuition. So. No, no. no. This is free and to the student. GED prep is only one of the things we do. That's true. We yeah. also do college prep, uh -huh. job skill prep. Um, prep for the entrance test for the military, um, English as a second language, mm -hmm. and beginning reading. Wow. So wow. we provide one-on-one um, -on -one tutors for our students who are weakest, mm -hmm. um, group classes, online study that's 24-7. If you come through us, we can wow. enroll you in an online program. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of services we provide. Basically, well, this one wanted to go back to school and be a nurse. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But I would definitely need the college prep. Mm -hmm. Well, we do that. Mm -hmm. I would because lots of our students I've forgotten are gotten so much. Mm -hmm. Really, we, right? Lots of our students do not want to take remedial classes in college, mm -hmm. and so they come to us to prepare ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And we find out this is what you need to be able to do. So here's here's where you are now. Mm -hmm. We get to it. Mm -hmm. Okay, night and day classes or yes. just, okay, mm -hmm. and what time do they start? We're open on Monday and Wednesday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and okay. on Tuesday and Thursday from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. So we have evening classes. Okay, do you have the teachers, um, how many teachers per student, what's the ratio? Um, there's usually one or two teachers available 
and to however many students show up. <laughs> we generally at any given time have uh, between eight and at the most about 12 yeah. students at any given time. So good time. ratio. So they yeah. get, yes. they get, yeah. <coughs> they get that one on one hand. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. they do. People yes. don't need to be afraid to come in and test <coughs> because they make right. it really comfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay, when you tested first time, how'd you do? I passed everything except math. Good mm -hmm. for you. Now how'd you do? <laughs> I, I did pretty pretty did. good. I just I, forty years you oh, have yeah. to brush up. Yeah. I'm with you. You're my age. I know. I'm with you. I'm feeling your pain. <laughs> Except that you look younger because you don't have gray hair. I'm like Angela. <laughs> yeah, y'all may use the same model. <laughs> Now, when you finish school, will you go talk to other people who may need to do this and encourage them and tell oh, them yeah. how worthwhile oh, it yeah. was? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is really worthwhile. Yeah. It is. It is. I wish I would have done it a long time ago. Uh -huh. Do you think it would have been easier, possibly? But, um, if I would have done it before? When oh, you were yeah. younger. Do you retain things oh, better? Yeah. Do you retain better than I do? Lord, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. But but I think some people do get intimidated as they get older. They think, well, I can't remember all mm -hmm. that stuff. Well, that's so different now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you let the fear and mm -hmm. intimidation of, oh, I can't let anybody know, or, you know, oh, I just couldn't do it. But mm -hmm. I let fear keep me from doing something I should have done a long time ago. Mm -hmm. I let life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Life kids. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. life does things that yeah. you yeah. think, yeah, what was I it thinking? Does. So Yeah. Well ladies, thank you very, very thank much. You. And we're thank gonna, you. we're gonna say we're gonna do whatever we have to do to raise some money. You oh, that's right. right. Thank you, you need about ten thousand more dollars. So <laughs> <laughs> what can we do, ladies out there? People who sing or what we need to do something. We need to do a fundraiser for y'all. If we raised fifteen hundred dollars, that'd be absolutely, absolutely. That'd be that'd be wonderful. Be wonderful. So yes, Let's see would. what we can do to, to put that to Where work. is the school? Where we are located in Epworth, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So we are almost to the Tennessee line. Mm -hmm. and halfway in, between Blue Ridge and McKay. And, McKay's right. and uh -huh. we are in the old Epworth school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is where the college was. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. That's okay. right. Exactly. Beautiful, beautiful building. It's a beautiful campus. Yes. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. Absolutely. Plenty of parking, campus. lovely right. facility. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Well, thank you yes, so much for being thank here. You. Right now, we're going to yeah. go to the community calendar. And on the community calendar, if you see your event not posted and you send it to us, get in touch with me because I've had some problems with emails and, and people have been actually sending them to my personal email. Thank you for doing that because um, folks had said, well, I sent stuff mm -hmm. three times and it never got on there. So mm -hmm. if you don't see your event, please get in touch with us and let us know. And we promise mm -hmm. to get it on there. So right now, let's go to the community calendar.
Surprise, surprise, surprise. You see this shirt? It says Hans Rufert. Gazanta. Chip. Eat like eating there's, like there's no, no tomorrow. tomorrow. Well, today we Look, are, there's in the we house. Are eating like there's no tomorrow. Hans, you don't know how many people are so thrilled you are sitting here, young man. I'm, I'm one of those people. <laughs> I, I think I'm the biggest, most thrilled person that there is because this uh, beats the heck out of, uh, out of a hospital. Well, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, there were days. Sarah and I went through this crying bout, and, and we have to say, Sarah from Out of the Blue is like your big sister. And I'm like your granny. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> and we kind of took this mission on to do the H team. And we refer to ourselves as the Hans team because we did whatever it took to keep you working by selling cookbooks and T-shirts while you were laid up doing nothing. Yeah, that's a, I was having <laughs> a la laid lazy up, vacation. Laid here. up doing nothing. Now let's talk about when you left. Um, on Saturday morning, to be quite honest with you, most of us thought we would never see you again. No, and that's pretty much kind of what we've been sort of hinted at anyway, because uh, they assumed that the, they actually only thought there were five spots in my head. There actually turned out to be ten uh, lesions or abscesses or uh, even tumors was one of the words that came up. And the assumption was that, uh, that it was not only bad, it was terminal. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. this is it. I mean, it's pretty mm -hmm. much. And, one of uh, one of my teams at, at MD Anderson said, "Well, you know, we, we had one time a patient that had uh, uh, had metastasis of the brain, and they lived eight months." And they said that, that like that was a good thing. And I'm like, eight months is not uh -uh. any time at all, you know, uh -uh. especially my schedule. I got a lot to do in eight months. Uh -huh. She's got that much work for me uh -uh. <laughs> alone, <laughs> website and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, so uh, Amy and I had to go through, I mean, really the gut wrenching discussions of, I mean, funeral arrangements and kids and you know all those kind of things mm -hmm. and uh, that's not easy and at 30 what 36 at 36 yeah, 36 now Sonia died at 34 yeah 34. so which still doesn't sit right with me like I don't feel like I should ever be older than my older sister you know yeah. that just doesn't seem mm -hmm. right so uh, and you know, even though I sort of had this this brush with death before um, which was a, a lot closer than I guess we realized because uh, we always read statistically you've got a 20 percent chance of survival well my my gastric or actually, he's my thoracic surgeon. Said it's more like a six or eight percent chance of survival. Right. You know, so I already kind of eked by one time before. So you know, I really should have already had those conversations about funeral and all this kind of stuff. But I mean, I guess when they're telling you now's the time to make those arrangements, um, and I think, and we, you and I talked about this before. Had I stayed here, um, You'd be here you guys would have already had the, the ceremony and the service. You know, because it wouldn't, uh, they would have treated me for the wrong thing. Right. Um, How? I don't even know what the feeling was. I know what I felt like when Amy called and said, my God, the doctor says we have a miracle. I, I can't imagine how you felt. We were in the IHOP here in LJ. We were screaming and shouting. I'm serious, and I'm going to cry now. But we were, because it was a call we never thought we'd get, and I was coming out of the bathroom, and Jen comes running down there and said, Amy's on the phone, Amy's on the phone. We thought you had died. Mm -hmm. And when she said, the doctor says there's a miracle, I just, we're just like, and the people in IHOP are looking at us like, what is wrong with those crazy old fools? But <laughs> this we, is the best pancakes I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> we could not believe it. We, it was like Wednesday night, we were planning your funeral. Oh, I know it. Thursday know it. morning, Thursday morning. The tides turn. Oh, yeah. And, and I said, and I tell you this all the time, God is tired of hearing the word, Huns, Huns. <laughs> Please pray for Huns. Talk about somebody else. That's right, change. exactly. But honestly, a, a miracle happened, and we know that because somebody, somebody said, gosh, maybe this isn't cancer. Maybe this is something wild and crazy. Yep. And for people who watch the movie House, how realistic is what happened to you? I, I got to tell you, we started watching House the the night before all of this happened, and uh, we we thought that that particular episode was written about me, because again, it was the, the guy who had had lesions in the brain. They assumed cancer, and what it turned out being on this particular issue of House was um, something in the heart valve uh, burst through and then you know caused the infection. Well, that was the first theory they had with me. Is then they've already done all the scans and thinking there has to be something wrong with this heart. Again, because there, there should, the brain should be sterile. There should never be any infection in the brain. And if there is, there has to be sort of a bridge between, you know, coming from somewhere else. And so they, they assumed at first, maybe they were watching House, I don't know, but they assumed that it was the heart valve. Uh, now the assumption is um, that it's the, uh, that fistula or hole that I have that was bleeding and put me in the hospital back in January, that that created the highway for, for the infection to go to the brain. Uh, and it is a type of strep, but it's not, it's not like strep throat. You know, it's just uh -huh. like 50 different types of strep. 
Uh, it's, it's called a nutrient deficient strep, and uh, it's it, but it, re it reacts really well to to the antibiotic. You know, uh -huh. so that's the great thing. Now they, they still haven't ruled out cancer, and you asked me what was my first reaction. My first reaction really was skepticism right. because I thought I don't want to get my hopes you up. You told me that that was the thing because we were all shouting for you know just. Oh, God. But we knew there was still a holding pattern. And I think, Sarah, don't you think that was the hardest thing? Because people kept saying, tell us the truth. Tell us what's really going on. We're telling you mm. all we know. We Every don't know. Every moment it changed. And I think yes. that was one of the things we discussed the first time I was here is people would call up day over and over during the day or come in the shop and want to know what was the latest with Hans. And, I, I was just like, you're going to have to go to his blog because it's changing every mm -hmm. minute. Right. And the other thing we talked about is a lot of days I'd forget to check the blog because I was getting personal emails and telephone conversations mm -hmm. that I just felt so lucky to get. And we'd start out our conversation where he sounded so weak he was barely recognizable. Right. And by the time we hung up, he was himself. Right. And I don't know, I guess 2020 hindsight, I, I just knew that it, it was not done. I didn't know what it was, but I just knew it wasn't done. Uh -huh. And um, maybe it's because I just couldn't handle that. Right. Uh, you know, it just was more than I could deal with at that time. But when he left, I knew he was coming back. And but see, I saw I'm him. so glad you felt that because I did. Well, see, I did, I'm and somebody so said to me, I don't, think, for you. I don't think he's making it back to Jasper. I said, then you don't know him. Uh -huh. That's all I know to tell well, she's you. She's a florist, so she was already thinking, how many flowers are going to eat? She is an opportunist. That's what I was thinking, too. She's thinking, wow. No, she no. makes us look like amateurs, yeah. doesn't she? <laughs> but, you know, I was like you. I was not thinking about what flowers will I fix for Hans. I was more, trying to be glass half full. You're coming back. Well, that's, well, that's what he taught us. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I try to do as well. But, yeah. I mean, but I'll be honest, though. I think you know, because I had been there. Yeah. And J.S. was That's so true. positive, and he was the one person, and he said it with every doctor. He said, Doc, will you learn anything? I'm going to beat cancer. Yeah. And I think that's what I was playing off of, and that's not good. Well, you know, and I've always been an optimist, I think, but it, but there was definitely several times where, you know, honestly, after the, the biopsy, that hurt. I mean, I can't even begin to tell you. I, I can't even register. There's no number to tell you how, how bad that hurt. And when I was in ICU, I mean, there were there were times where I I don't care how you make it stop, just make it stop. And if it means I'm going to die, then I'm I'm ready to die. And that's uh, it's almost embarrassing for me to admit that. But at the same time, that's that's the level of pain that this uh -huh. this caused. And uh, and I let's mean, talk about the pain level today because you told me you had to take something to be here today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, I've always tried to kind of you know macho. I think that's my dad coming through and trying to you know get through without doing the pain meds. But I absolutely do need the pain meds at this point. And. Uh, Mainly because there's still I have ten swollen spots in my brain, you know, and, and they're going to be there for at least another couple of weeks. Uh, you and I talked about it. I'm not sure if we talked about it on air or not, but those those areas, if you look at them on CT, are, are very well defined areas. So in order to protect itself, what the body does is it takes that area of infection and, and, and capsulizes it, right? It makes a little pocket, and as the infection goes away, it replaces it with a healthy fluid, and so that it's a good thing because it's it's the healing process, but still the same amount of pressure there. So. Yeah. Uh, the only way they can know that, that this antibiotic is working is by checking my white blood cell counts to make sure they're going down, and they've gone down 6,000 points since I was in the hospital. Wow. Um, but they can't rule out cancer until I go back and have an MRI. So I actually have two trips uh, to Houston still to do. So uh, I guess that's why I'm really sort of cautiously optimistic is the term I keep using, because I, uh -huh. I, I'm looking for that, the good news too. But they all keep tempering that good news with, but this still might be, you know, metastasis or whatever. So, so. Um, but the great thing is, before the assumption was that it is cancer, now the assumption is that it's not cancer. Uh -huh. So they're not ruling it out cancer, but they're also not assuming that it is. Right. So I mean, that's right. that's a pretty good. Uh, Let's talk shift. about the fact that you did not go through total brain radiation. And I was, I mean, they literally. I mean, that was to me in the, a miracle in itself. They because had me, you are so smart. Well, they have. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that would have been the hardest thing for me if I. You were told me here, that. You said that was it. And I had a hard time signing my own name, and we talked. About that and, and that was so frustrating too because I, I knew where the paper was but like the pen wasn't connecting with it and uh, that just this just drove me crazy and uh, so the whole brain radiation they'd already done the mask which was a pretty interesting experience and they had everything ready to go but even before they made the mask um, since I'm a seizure risk and still am um, they didn't want me flying to Texas for a time then my, my doctor here dr. York who you know said look we need to go ahead and start radiation tomorrow mm -hmm. so they already had me booked for the table and already had me booked for for a week of, of you know full-on boil the egg, you know, cook in my brain. That's so and scary. so two things would have happened. Either either one, I would have been vegetative in some capacity, either motor skills or speech or whatever it is. 
Uh, or it could have killed me because, again, that the, there's one area right above, it's hard to point because it's right in the middle of my head. Uh -huh. um, everybody has sort of a, a pocket in their brain, and that pocket uh, just to the right of it is, is where the biggest abscess is, and it's a, it's a rupture risk. And uh, so flying you know, with a pressure change, that, that could have popped. But radiation makes the symptoms much, much worse before they get better. So that's probably what would have happened is we would have gotten the radiation table and my head would have popped. So uh, anyway, it's a good thing we didn't do the radiation. Who is the doctor? Let's, let's give credit where credit is due. MD Anderson, who is the person who walked in and says, Oh, my gosh, we may be looking at something different. Well, Dr. Dr. Wayne Hofstetter is my thoracic surgeon, but see, I had seven teams working on it at the same time, mm -hmm. so it's not fair to single him out, but... So House and his friends. That's right. So, but he came in, and uh, he was also the one saying, you know, that he gave us the, the speech, you know, that this is the bad stuff, and he didn't want to do that either, because he's been on my team since, since day one. And, uh, you know, he had to give Amy the bad speech, but he also got to bring Amy the good news, and so uh, I think that was great for him. In fact, he walked out, and you know, I've got a tattoo that I got after my first surgery um, that he knows I'm very proud of. And so he, he, as he was leaving the room, after he gave us the good news, is he said, uh, it's time to start planning your next tattoo. In other words, there's hope you're going you're gonna to get past this and we'll, we'll memor, you know, memorialize awesome. it somehow. So awesome. that was, was pretty nice. But I think it was Dr. Cahill that... Uh, yeah, Dr. Cahill was my brain surgeon. Yes. And uh, he was also the one that uh, would love to go in and, and get some of this out of my head, but basically he said that Every time you go in there, you, have, you run the risk of paralysis or, you know, again, right. basically the same thing as, as radiation. So, uh, but he was, he was a fun guy. He's, he's 37 or 38, so it's strange to know wow. somebody just a couple, couple years older than me. And uh, was very smart, and, and, and he's the one who, who rushed the biopsy. In fact, we did it the night we found it. We were going to do a biopsy. We did it that night at about midnight. And uh, he said, I want to get in there. I want to get a piece of it. I want to biopsy it. We need to, we need to know what this is. So he really is the one, I guess, that said, Put on the brakes, cancel the radiation. Let's let's see what it is before we fry it. That that is just incredible to me. I yep. mean, it, it is try, almost like yeah. almost like too good to be true. No, but try to imagine what it would be like to think that you were at three thirty going to have whole head radiation, mm -hmm. yeah. and then have somebody walk in and go, "Hold it, we're not going to do that. Oh, we're yeah. going to do brain surgery instead." Yeah. And I mean, are there better. any good options? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I mean, can somebody give me some something better than that? But I've got the pictures, and I've got to I've got to bring it in um, of what these things look like because they're. They are impressive, I and mean, I'm not saying impressive like I'm proud of them. Yeah. But it's it's still it's amazing to see what size they are, and uh, and to know that somebody would put on the brakes because to me the obvious solution was let's start frying it, whatever it is, let's let's start taking care of it. Uh -huh. But then somebody had the sense to go, wait a second, you know. So uh, now let's talk about the antibiotic they've chosen to treat this with. This is called rocephin, and rocephin, as they were culturing the biopsy, they started on a, what they call broad spectrum antibiotic, and as they narrowed it down to what it is, they were able to start tapering off others and, and getting it down to the one that they know is the most effective. So uh, I have to do it twice a day for about 40 minutes or so, 12 hours apart. So I, do it, I did it this morning at 7.30, 7.40, and I'll do it again tonight about the same time. And, uh, but I was doing a pole system of the bag, you know, gravity fed, and this is my pick line, and I uh, hope that doesn't... I remember having pick lines. Yeah, that, that was freak so anybody much out. Fun. No. But it goes, it goes down next to my heart, and there's no, no pain involved or anything. And it was just this purple part, but when they switched over to this, they added uh, this extension. Uh -huh. So now I can do it myself. So I flush it with saline and heparin. And oh, whatever. God. And, uh, <laughs> no kidding. Oh, that's, that's... I'm remembering all this because oh, yeah. we did all yeah. this. Yeah. So, but this is the, just the coolest little feature because this is, is vacuum packed and feel that. It's, it's tight. Uh -huh. And oh, so yeah. it's, it's full of liquid. Kind of like it's freeze dried. Exactly. Yeah. So wow. um, what yeah. I do is. Freeze dried Maxwell House. <laughs> there you go. Fresh to the last drop. Good uh -huh. to the last drop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I just basically I take this little red cap off and I attach it to, the, attach it to here and then I do a little clip. And it just starts going, I and mean, you can you can watch wow. it go in. So uh, I can then put this in my in my jacket pocket or or whatever. I did get hung on the garage door today when I was <laughs> t taking something down to the garage. That was kind of stupid, but um, but anyway, it gives me a little bit of freedom. I still need to do the actual connection. I need to do it in a sterile environment. I do it at home, but at least I can walk around the house, and I'm not mm -hmm. I'm not tethered to a pole. So uh, let's talk system. about the children and Amy and being home. Well, that's just a world of difference. I mean. Um, the hospital, even though it's, I think it's the best hospital in the world for cancer, it still is a hospital, right. and they still come and wake you up every, you know, every couple hours. Are you sleeping, That's Mr. Exactly Rupert? That's exactly what they're doing. Mr. Rupert, sure are you sleep. napping? Oh, good. Well, go back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> and the IV pole, and, you know, loud noises give me really bad headaches, uh, and that, the worst than anything else was the IV pole when it starts beeping, and I had so many different drips going. Uh, whenever it went off, 
if you can't get anybody to come fast enough, just turn the thing off. It's driving me crazy. Although I did learn pretty quick. You know, I, I hacked the IV pull. <laughs> yeah. I learned how to turn that There's sucker no off. There's no doubt in my mind he hacked an IV pull. <laughs> and that one nurse told me, you're not supposed to do that. And I know. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> then come sooner. Right. Then come sooner. Yes, yeah, it'd be standing at my door as that little bad boy beeps. So, uh, but now Amy, of course, has been through a ton. And, and uh, when the day they put this pick line in, they made her leave the, the room. And, and uh, we're real kind of. That was the one bad experience we had was, was this thing. And uh, in fact, when they were done, they asked me if I could feel anything behind my right ear. And I'm like, no. Well, actually, at that point, I had still the bandages and stuff. So I didn't know if I could feel anything back there. I mean, I just had surgery. Uh -huh. And I, but I said, why? Why would I feel anything? We said, well, if it goes the wrong way, sometimes instead oh, of going God. down, it'll go up and go behind your ear. So to test if it went behind my ear, they would flush saline through it just to see if I felt the thing wet back there. I'm like, what? Is this? Oh, wow. <laughs> I have no confidence in you people. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, they, they made Amy leave for that and, and were real, real kind of rude about that. And, and, uh, and plus, you know, having to move, you know, she was, she always called herself my pack animal because she did have to move all of our stuff from room to room from, you know, and then when we got discharged to the adjacent hotel, she had to move things back and forth there. So she had a and no sleep and it's just a it's a tough thing for anybody to go through but i think it's harder sometimes for the caregiver than it is for the patient because number one i'm on drugs and number two uh <laughs> i also just sort of resign to it you know what i mean it's like whatever you got to do just do it but she's the one having to actually you know handle yeah. what's what's going on let's talk about mayo call and md anderson hospital yeah they uh they were they were tired of, i think they were happy to see me go yeah. <laughs> uh, i got a bunch of mail and there's uh, i've been writing thank you cards and there's actually there's a lot of folks who didn't give me return addresses so there's a lot of folks that i, I can't personally thank but uh uh, it's amazing to live in this community, and by this community, I mean all up and down. Every, everybody who watches the show, it's, it's just amazing that all of these people rallied together. And uh, I mean, everyone here had a, had a large part in that and getting that to happen. But uh, uh, that's what I've always talked about, even during Relay for Life, in my healthier days, uh, talking about the fact that there are so many people who say that I don't know what to say. Just send a card and say, I don't know what to say. You know, right. just, just say, I don't know what to right. say, so I'm writing you a card. Feel that's better, right. whatever it is. Because that just, it's so much strength on a piece of paper that you wouldn't even begin to imagine that that. It's just a little memento or token of, of, of a much larger thing. You know, it's just a, it's just a, a glimpse of this great you know, rally of support that, uh, that I have, and I'm, I'm blessed to have it. I can't wait until the next book because we've talked about this, and, and I told you the story about people stayed away from J.S. Right. Because they didn't know what to say. He mm -hmm. was this big, strong man who was a workaholic, always doing for others, and then all of a sudden he was totally incapacitated. Mm -hmm. People didn't know how to handle it, did right. they? Mm -mm. And and some people chose not to handle it. And on his deathbed, he's still saying, you know, I don't have leprosy, I only have cancer. That's right, yeah. And people did not come mm. to see him, and it broke his heart. And, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, I hold grudges, I guess. Yeah. But I still think, ooh, why didn't you come see him right. when it mattered? No, I have a lot so of friends, So you want to talk that, about that, don't yeah, you? I had some friends that sort of dropped me the first time, too. And then they later then said, you know, I just don't know what to say, so I didn't say anything. And uh, so I do want to write a book sort of about not just cancer etiquette, but just sort of health etiquette, like what, what things that people have done that were incredibly valuable to us. I mean, not, not necessarily gifts or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, just what things they did or said mm -hmm. that were valuable. Mm -hmm. And then also what things sort of weren't. I mean, because there, there were times that um, people would do things maybe to make themselves feel better, you know, and, which, is, which I understand everything can be boiled down to making right. yourself feel better. But uh, so I want to book, write a book that has some of this experience in there as well, you know, being faced with another you know, chance of death. But also a, a, a manual for uh, caregivers on on how to how to help. Here's mm -hmm. what you can actually actively do to uh, to make a difference in, during this process. So I remember the day I talked to Amy about it, and she told me she it's the first time I ever saw her really break down, and she said he has been my life for 20 years. Mm -hmm. We have been together for 20 years this month, and she said I can't imagine not being because i think maybe the first time maybe we all thought you were a miracle then right. so it never hit her and she said this time she felt like i did how do you go in the bathroom and scream loud enough and 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 do it alone because she was trying not to do it in front of you yeah. and it got hard on her yeah. because once you realize my life is leaving because you are each other's lives. No, and, since she was and 16 and I was 18, we've been together, right, you know. Right. And Amy's so private and Hans is so public. Right. And, but I will tell you that the day they, See, the day before JS they left. See, that's just the opposite. Isn't that weird? It's in this, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> it's the same way in, in my life, too. And, and the, the day before they left, I was at their home and Amy was so contained. Uh -huh. And then I was there the other day and she came down the stairs and it was like mm -hmm. a, a new living person. Mm -hmm. She was so different. Mm -hmm. It was just a gift to get and, to see her like that. And I that. truly believe that God has a plan for everything. Mm -hmm. And maybe 
Maybe there was a plan in this. Maybe there was a plan to rally this community. Maybe there was a plan to show us how strong we could be for you because you every single day rallied this community. Thousands of people are looking at the blog every morning yes. and people, I mean, we said this the other night, somebody was talking about at the concert, we did mm -hmm. the friend raiser for you right. and Jasper. And one of the women who was about to sing said, I lived to hear what Hans had said that day because people were living for you to say there's something good happening. There is a positive note. And they knew that, I mean, every church, I don't care what denomination, they're all praying for you. And they wanted you to know that they are lifting you in spirit. That makes a huge and difference. And when you see the concert, I actually brought you a DVD. Oh, it's not the finalized. It hasn't been. It's just gone to New Jersey to be finished. But I'm going to give you a copy of it today. You talk about some spirit in a house. And when you see these little folks, the back of the cover has the people in the Hans T-shirts. <laughs> And, and it was people who didn't know you, but right. you mattered to them. You mattered so much to them. And, and I said, that's the thing that I thought, maybe God does have a plan in this. Because mm -hmm. for whatever reason, Amy's stronger. You know, no, I think we all are. Absolutely. Everybody is. Yeah, Everybody is. What did you, you think about the dancing? And you and I were like the crybabies. We're like, oh, oh, we can't do this. Well, and it was yeah, hard to see anything beyond that. Mm -hmm. It was so mm -hmm. big, you know. And uh, that we're having a meeting after this uh, show to get back on track to catch up with all where we left off right. because there's right. just still too much to do. Yep. And let's talk about the book signing at Galleria. Are you going to be able to do that? Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, I hope so. If uh, everything goes well, I think I've got... Uh, um, what about the germ uh, issue and, and how well, do you feel about that? The, the, the best part is, is that every day I get a little less quarantine. You know, the more of these I take, the better I am in those kind of experiences. So uh, we will have to kind of take a break so I can do an infusion, you know, so I've got to keep up with that schedule. I can't miss any of those. Um, but I mean, I, I'm planning on absolutely doing the thing. And, and Paula Dean is going to be there. And I, I, uh, my friends Dan and Steve got to talk to Paula Dean, and she apparently has been reading the blog. And, and so that was kind of nice that she's following the whole thing. Uh, Food Network has actually been really supportive during this as well. Um, I just, I've got three emails from the different VPs. Uh, yesterday that are that are following you know what's going on and offering to help so and then I've uh, hopefully the Today Show wants me to come up there in July and uh, do something on the Today Show and uh, so I'm, I'm, I, I want to do as many things as I possibly can right. but I, at the same time I do have to kind of temper it with reality and what I can and you can't do. do and flying may still be an issue for it a while. It might be and so. Uh, so but I mean yesterday um, I did I did try to drive a little bit and uh, 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 uh. Uh, <laughs> Doctor, don't watch this segment. Doctor, turn your TV yeah. off. <laughs> well, I think it went well, but I was very aware of the fact that, uh, that I hadn't driven in a while. You know, I just went to the recycle center and then stopped by Kroger. And, uh, uh, don't so, say those words. You did not. <laughs> yes, I did. In fact, I saw Bill last he night. He told me, and I wasn't going to rat you out. <laughs> I was going to be so cool about it. You ratted yourself out. But, but you know, that, that's a huge part of, of um, sort of independence and, and strength for me, too. I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not good at being chauffeured and, and those kind of things. So um, I got that from my dad, too, I think. Uh -huh. but, uh, but anyway, but it, it, it also kind of helped me realize what my limitations are. You know, right. I, mean, I, I didn't do anything dangerous, but at right. the same time, I realized that, you know, this is still... This is still well, kind of it's the man thing in him. J.S. wasn't supposed to drive. He was in a neck brace. He had an IV. He gets in his truck. I'm out at the farm. I look up, and here comes his truck pulling in the driveway. And I said, who's driving his truck? Mm -hmm. Oh, God, it's, it's him. him. Mm -hmm. He's got the neck brace on. He can't turn his head to see traffic. But he decided to drive out to the farm to see how progress was going. I'm like, oh, God. Well, at least it wasn't a tractor-trailer truck, huh? <laughs> That's right. You men, you men drive us crazy. Right now, we're going to take a break, and we're going to go to a song that we queued up in honor of you today. It is um, by Karen Peck. It starts called Amazing Grace and it goes on to say, when God comes, he is not four days late. Now, That's do right. you love this song? I love this song. Yes. This is an awesome, awesome, uplifting song and I hope they can turn the monitors on so mm -hmm. Hans can hear it. Yeah. We play it once or twice a week for you okay. because it says in this world, God is always on time. Mm -hmm. We thought he was four days late with you because we're thinking on Saturday, Ah, oh, we may never see him again. Yeah. And then, honestly, just a few days later, Amy calls and says, Ah, oh, there's a miracle, there's a miracle. And it was an awesome feeling. And, and this song will take you from the lowest point to the highest point and make you think that God is always on time. Mm -hmm. He has never, he's, he's just, he's not four days late, no. is he? No, nope, he's no. always on time. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to Karen Peck in New River, and I'm going to tell you, she is Dahlonega, Georgia. Born and bred, sweet, sweet, precious lady who writes music. And I want to tell you about something that's going on while they're queuing that up. 
Faith Baptist Church in Ball Ground behind the elementary school will have a passion play Sunday, um, April the 5th at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. So if you live in that area or you know how to get down there, go to Faith Baptist Church in Ball Ground behind the elementary school for the passion play. Um, when Karen does this song at concerts, they actually have the Passion of the Christ playing behind her. Oh. It's absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible. Now, can we turn on the monitor so Hans can hear this? Thank you.
Welcome back. Okay, we are visiting with ETC's number one boy. Now, Hans Rupert has been here since day one. He is responsible for me sitting in this seat because you came up with this vision of a 15-minute show years ago that aired and then re-aired for 15 minutes. It actually started at eight minutes. And then, I know, it's so funny. It, actually, <laughs> I, it was Roger and Danny's vision. <coughs> for whatever reason, they picked me and, uh, and then basically just said, figure it out you know so it was, uh, we kind of made i think the, the analogy was uh, making a cake and inventing the recipe as you go along i don't uh -huh. even know what kind of cake or what it's supposed to look like or you know where the oven was so uh -huh. it was, that was that was interesting it was interesting and we have evolved to this now um this program has given us the opportunity to share your story it has given us an opportunity to um good news bad do, bad news you know the ladies who just left here a few minutes ago were here the day we got bad news about you right. and they said isn't that incredible that we're back today and he has good news yeah. so so there is good news um they're hoping that things are really great and you go back to anderson in a couple of weeks yep. Yep. now is there anything you want to say to everybody out there well you know you're talking about this this show and this station and i've always said uh, like on joe mccutcheon's show that this station really has created a much larger community. It used to be just Jasper was Jasper and LJ was LJ and mm -hmm. you know, nobody even thought of McKaysville or, or right. Turtle Town or Farner. Right. And so we've created this much larger community. And, and for me, it was amazing to see those threads being stitched together from the television side, but then from the personal side, being a patient to see what kind of support that can give. And so mm -hmm. we really created this sort of safety net. Uh, and it's just amazing. I get cards again from Farner, from Ducktown, Turtle Town, um, Actually, even Rabbit Town, which is out called by, by Tate. Uh -huh. there's, a, there's a town named after every animal <laughs> in this area, which is awesome. Uh, but anyway, the, the, the people who, who would send a card with literally a dollar in there, which I think you had you started, mm -hmm. and, uh, and just saying, I wish I could give more. And, and the thing is, at no point did I ever expect that. But to get that and to know that that's what they could give, uh, made a huge difference. It's just, it's just amazing to receive that kind of support. And I guess unless you have done it, you can't really understand what it is. Um, but the realities of it are, as you mentioned, there are tremendous expenses with this kind of medical mm -hmm. treatment, even mm -hmm. meals and, and snacks and those kind right. of things. Right. Um, so it's just it's been amazing. <coughs> my, my surrogate grandmother, Willard Howard, um, made me a quilt. That quilt. That? Oh, my God. That That's quilt. Just, uh, now, when you're 99 and die, I want the quilt. <laughs> I've already claimed it. Sorry. Sarah, it is so beautiful. Yes. Well, it is so is, beautiful. The thing is, she is a beautiful person, too. She came to, when we were doing the live show uh, up there, it's... Uh, uh, town and country she came to 17 of the 18 live shows wow um and she she's the one who said she was my surrogate grandmother i'm uh -huh. like fine i'll take it you can't have enough grandmothers uh -huh. um, but that's just one example of just how just how amazing people have been and uh, i've been writing thank you cards and uh, a lot of the cards didn't have return addresses so if you didn't get a thank you card it's uh it's not for lack of trying mm -hmm. um in fact a lot of those dollar bills went to post <laughs> there's <laughs> there a lot to send all those uh, yeah. cards out but uh, yeah. Yeah. but anyway it's just uh, just tremendous and and uh, I, you know the thing about the book too, at first I started thinking, well, you know, people are buying it out of out of sort of charity, um, but now they're coming back and buying Absolutely. four or five copies, Absolutely. and that to me is just is sort of a validation thing too. And the, the the eat like there's no tomorrow. When I first was diagnosed with this uh, health adventure or hiccup, I kind of thought, well, this is really bad timing because you know here I'm talking about how to you know live healthy and you right. Know, and now you now boy, am I a poor yeah, example? Exactly, bad example. <laughs> right. But really, it's it's really kind of if anything, strengthening the message mm -hmm. of the book. And uh, and that kind of feels good, too, you know, that I right. didn't write it for, for nothing. And even if things had gone wrong, um, I think that also sort of strengthens the, the, the book, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, you do have to kind of live live and eat like there is no tomorrow. So um, the, the whole the whole thing has just been, it's just been, in a really bad storm, there's been a lot of rays of light. Right. Here. One of the things we've done in selling the books, I made copies of people's checks because I want you to be able to, <clears throat> I deposit them in the bank, but I made Xerox copies of them so you can look and say, wow, thank you, because some people bought one, some people bought four or five, some people couldn't buy one and made a donation, and right. I love that. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. I love the idea that whatever way they could help, it didn't matter. As little as big, um, one lady bought ten the night of the concert mm -hmm. we had in Jasper, and we called it a friend raiser because we didn't know how else to bring your message. So we showed the heart of the home with you on it. Mm -hmm. That was a great interview. It, it was, was. It was yeah. great, and we showed that before the mm -hmm. singing, and then we let people know the awareness, and all the groups talked about you, and how um, we can all come together to do whatever you know. Now May the second, we're doing another friend raiser. It's going to be an Appalachian Technical 
Medical College. We have groups who will be there. We'll be selling the DVD of the first show. You get proceeds from that. We will be selling t-shirts and cookbooks. And my goal is by then, this is May the 2nd, I'd really like to be able to say, gosh, I'm sorry, but we're out of the first edition cookbook, <laughs> but you'll be glad to get on the waiting list for the second. Oh, because be nice. Has anybody you know, given you a t-shirt? <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, but I, there's one my dad had. Okay. I guess somebody gave to uh -huh, him. I did. Yeah. Him, so. yeah. I, I haven't seen the green. I like the green. Well, uh, 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 don't tell anybody it's a limited edition. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Limited to me. Yeah. Mine's, mine's white. Yeah. So. Limited to me. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And we have to say a very big thank you to Buddy Jones of Printer Direct. Buddy did these. The cost was like dirt cheap in order to help you. And and he designed it. He printed it. It says on the back, "Friends don't let friends fight cancer alone." And um, we just, I went to him and I said, you know, we've been friends 40 years. And I said, buddy, do, do this for me. He did it fast. He did it cheap. And, and he basically, and so a big, big thank you to Betty Jones and Sheila over at Printer Direct. That's they um, brought us another four or five boxes yesterday. We've got enough shirts for the next friend raiser. We have all sizes available now. They're available at Keepsakes for Me. They're available at Mountain View. Um, have you got still mm -hmm. some T-shirts? Yes. Jasper Drugs. So if you need a T-shirt, and we want everybody to show up on May the 2nd at the concert we're doing in honor of him in your T-shirts. Because the last picture, we had about 16, 17 yeah. people standing down front, and we used them on the, on the back of the DVD. This concert, we want the whole audience. Now, I'll be the one sitting up front in green. green. <laughs> You'll be able to see me because, uh, yes, I do have a limited edition shirt. You deserve Actually, one. That's yeah, fine. Well, it has been an honor. It has been a privilege. I said, I, honest to goodness, the call from Amy was worth all the miles, all the, all the worry, all the thinking. How can we do? What can we do? Who can we call? Who can we get on board? And not one person said, oh, I don't have time for that. There was never a time. Well, any the thing is, somebody said to me, "Well, it's great you don't don't have cancer, but the the reality is, this is all cancer related because exactly. you know that hole came from radiation damage, which came from you know which was cancer treatment. So this is very cancer related. And again, we, we haven't ruled out cancer, but I guess the way it was kind of phrased to me is almost they were disappointed. I mean, I, I, maybe I'm maybe I interpreted that wrong, but somebody said, "Oh, well, you know, you don't you don't have cancer, so all this was for nothing." I'm like, no, this is you know this is part of the, oh all, yeah, it's all absolutely. one thing, you know. So absolutely, um, I mean, I'm at, I'm at a cancer hospital and. Uh, somebody said you might be the only person in this building that doesn't have cancer. Wow. Uh, you know, Wouldn't but, that be awesome? You know, so uh, that's, that's You'll a take pretty that. big, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll take it. But, but again, because it's cancer related, they're the ones that are treating me. You know, which right. is which is great. Well, let's take a break for just a second. Let Angela mm -hmm. do birthdays because you have got some birthdays going yes, on. Yes, I've got Ronald Cruz. This is from your wife, Ronald, and his birthday is um, April the third. Happy happy birthday. Then we've got Carol Pax. Um, April the 4th. I think, is that Parks or Parks? Park. Parks. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Happy birthday, Carol. Okay. Janet Ponder is on April the 5th. Happy birthday. And then Skylar McDonald from your proud grandparents, Dean and Sandy. Skylar is going to be one year old on April 4th. So, happy birthday. And um, we have to, I need a birthday blank because we have a lady, Miss Betty Champion, whose birthday is tomorrow. Miss Lily Martin's birthday is tomorrow, mm -hmm. April the 4th. Mm -hmm. um, they are two very opposites. One's an older lady, one's a young kid. Born on the same day, and I hope that when Lily grows up, she's as fine a lady as Miss Betty is. Miss Betty has been the grandma to many. Kind of like you, she just kind of adopted the neighborhood kids. Yep. She babysat <laughs> a lot of them, and she is the neighborhood granny. So mm -hmm. um, we hope they have a great, great birthday tomorrow. So somebody please bring me some birthday blanks. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got a funeral announcement? I do. Um, Roper Funeral Home announces the arrangements for Reverend William Clyde Brock. He was 79 years old. Um, he passed away this week, and his funeral is going to be Friday, April the 3rd at 11 a.m. at the Roper Funeral Home Chapel. So. And he is survived by wife Mary Brock and son Stephen Camille. So, yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's one of those things that we have a connection, okay? And Debbie Lawson of Jasper also. Right, that's mm -hmm. right. He is um, Kathy, our secretary's. Mm -hmm. sister's father-in-law. Yes. So in Jasper, there are a lot of connections. There are a lot yes. of connections. Well, Hans, it has been amazing to have you here. It, it is amazing to tell the story of um, possibly a great, great success. What's the first thing you wanted to do when you came home? 
Yeah, food was probably high, high up yeah. on my priority list. I wanted yeah. to eat something. How good, are you, you know, doing so. with yeah. eating? I'm uh, doing really well. You know, for a time there, I was having reflux. That was one of my biggest complaints with all mm -hmm. of it was the headaches, obviously, and, and reflux because one of the steroids was just anything was just causing reflux and painful, burning, I mean, awful reflux. And uh, so that's tapered away. I'm allowed to eat pretty much anything, you know. So, uh, mm -hmm. and I have been, <laughs> I yeah. mean, you know, as much as I possibly can. Yeah. I, and I lost some weight at the hospital, so uh, yeah. I got to gain some, some weight back. So that's always been a... So what's been your favorite thing that you've eaten since you've been home? God, you know, we, we did have some takeout from the Woodbridge. I had to try out from the Woodbridge. Oh, was, yeah. Uh, oh, was, yeah. You got good. takeout from the Woodbridge? Good, huh? <laughs> Delivery, <laughs> even. I didn't even have to tip the driver. How'd you do that? <laughs> I mean, I, I really? have connections. I do have some connections at the Woodbridge. Okay, so. if you walk into the Woodbridge Inn, what do you order? I uh, always have an onion soup because there's not a better onion Love soup it. in the world. Absolutely. Uh, and I keep trying at other places thinking I'm going to find one. Uh -uh. There's no such thing. No. Um, and then uh, it's usually toss up, either either a trout or a, a pork schnitzel. Um, I, have, I have kind of my standbys. But then also, whatever the chef's got special too, sometimes I'll hit mm -hmm. whatever he has. But, uh, I love the flounder. Oh, yeah, that's I great. love that flounder. Uh, yeah. I've eaten that flounder for 30-something years, and yeah. I'm like, you know, get over it, Sherry. Have something else. But I love that flounder. We've so. had a lot of people that are chicken parmesan freaks. It and, is uh, famous. Uh, oh, yes. Well, I can't think of his name. Uh, Qual Tommy Qualls. Uh -huh. um, he ate chicken parmesan for probably 20 years, and then my dad one day brought him out a pork schnitzel and said, look, if you don't like it, here's your chicken parmesan. And now for <laughs> the last funny. 20 years, he's eaten nothing but pork schnitzel. So he had like the one the one switch there. But we have a lot of customers like that that are, that are devoted and dedicated to one, uh -huh, one thing. Uh -huh. And lemon pie. I love it. It's so funny when they do that anniversary special and you get $9.95, you get your meal, yada, yada. And you get a choice of apple strudel or lemon pie. Well, there's no choice. You cannot compare apple strudel to that lemon pie. Uh, what were they thinking? I don't know. But they're, they're strudel fans too. And uh, Ella loves to go back and make her own dessert. So that's that's the highlight for her is to be able to go back there and she makes the most just ugly concoctions of hot fudge and whatever. But uh, uh -huh. that's what she loves to do. So that's mm -hmm. that's part of the treat for them. And I, and I love that they can do that. You know, mm -hmm. it's part of their history now too. Now, will there be days that you will be? Um, out and about, what kind of what kind of time frame do you think on your quarantine? Well, I, again, I, every, every day is a little a little less strict. So, uh, I mean, I, I hope within a couple of weeks. And again, four weeks was sort of the magic number because four weeks is about the time that those those lesions with the healthy fluid sort of dissipate. So uh -huh. that's the time where we think the headaches are going to start going down. That really is my biggest problem. Somebody honks a horn, and I just want to scream. You know? Oh so. gosh. Well, I'm going to let you have the honor of drawing, and I didn't put Lily Martin in purely because she's my grandchild, uh -huh. and Lord knows we can't, you know, so yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to do that because my luck, she'd win, it's so nepotism. we're going to draw the birthday, and then we're going to go to Rich Scott, and we're going to see if he'll trade us a cake for a Dairy Queen Sherry Martin Blizzard. Have you ever had one? No, I've heard good things about it. Oh, though. have mercy and love. They are so good. They are good. <laughs> So simply good. <laughs> All right, let's see who we got. So today's winner is Timmy Jenkins. There you go. Today the birth is 3.30. Happy, happy birthday. Yep. 31 happy birthday. years old. 31 years old, so you'll get a cake. I'm not sure where it comes from. Maybe they'll tell me in just a second. Yeah. Right now we're going to go to Rich Scott, who is going to be trading, trading, trading. I know he sold a lot of things on trading time last weekend. Let's see what he's I'm got going on. I'm wondering if this is the Timmy Jenkins that races go-karts with us. Maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Rich Scott in trading time. And we have some great new bargains to tell you about as we close out another week on ETC3's Trading Time. How about a beautiful Cadillac at a bargain price? A great deal on a top-of-the-line GE refrigerator, brand new. Have a queen-size iron sleigh bed new to the list. Police scanners, baby swings, little girls' clothes, riding mowers. Just some of the 325 bargains you'll now find on the Trading Time website. I'm Rich Scott. Join us for the live broadcast of Trading Time each weekday morning at 11 or the Encore shows at 5.30 p.m. and again at 12 midnight. We invite you to call in your bargains during the 11 o'clock broadcast each day or shop online anytime at our website, www.northgeorgianow.com slash trading time. A whole new way to find what you're looking for here in our North Georgia mountains and the Copper Basin. We'll be looking for you later today right here on ETC3. Hans, it's great to see you. Now back to Sherry Martin in North Georgia Now today. Okay, we've got a fast question. we got to do a really, really fast mm -hmm. question. If I go to the Woodbridge Inn and I eat, okay, I, it's only been three minutes since I told y'all, what would I have for main course? What would I have for dessert? If you know, guess what you win? Oh, you get the hotties. You get the Booth Brothers. Now, let me tell you something else. And then bring it and get them to sign it. That's right. Bring concert. it to the concert mm -hmm. on April the 24th. We will be at Jasper United Methodist Church for the Booth Brothers. Get there early. Get a seat and be prepared to throw $10 in that bucket because we're going to be collecting yeah. and they were very expensive very to bring expensive. to town and very worth it. Let's talk about the cookbook one more time. People are not describing it as a cookbook. They are describing it as a life's lesson. 
I have heard so many comments. They said this this has everything in it. Two it has everything in, in it. It's mm -hmm. a it's a travel log. You've been to Germany. Yeah. Absolutely, flounder and lemon pie, you got it. And tell them you want the Sherry Martin special at the Woodbridge, because that is it, and that is good. The cookbook has phenomenal photography. Yeah, Amy does a fantastic job with, with photographs, and I, I took a couple of them, usually the, the weird like bugs and things I took. Uh, but uh, no, she does an amazing job with all of those things. But yeah, and, and I wasn't really sure how that was gonna be received, being that it was sort of, you know, you describe it as what? A, it is the best. It's, a, it's an autobiographical photo album mm -hmm. that happens to have recipes. That's right. They were kind of an afterthought, That's the right. recipes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it's the only cookbook that you'll ever buy that you read the entire book before you even cook anything. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Really well, I have is. challenged myself to cook something you make, so I'm going to do that one day. Mm -hmm. I don't know how soon, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> but I, mm -hmm. I just keep looking at the pictures. I love the dahlia in the front. Mm -hmm. I love the peas. Mm -hmm. I, just, mm -hmm. I, I just sit and find myself fascinated with the photography. Mm -hmm. well, that's the way we are in our garden. Is you know, every day, whatever is whatever is you know coming up, we're just absolutely fascinated with what's, uh -huh. what it is, and the kids are too. So that's kind of what I wanted to capture that sort of love of, of as things come up. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, as spring comes, with spring comes hope. We that's are true. very hopeful. Mm -hmm. We are very positive. We know that um, prayers are answered because I'm going to tell you something. Um, Sandy, who just called in a birthday or uh, something we had here, mm -hmm. she is one of these ladies. Her son is in Iraq fighting. Mm -hmm. She has been so focused on praying for you, and her family has. And, and I, she's asked prayer for her son. He's 40 years old. He's in Iraq or right in Af Afghanistan, I believe. But, um, you know, it gives the community something positive. You have given us such a, such a light of hope, and we are so proud of you. We are mm -hmm. so proud of you. And you'll be back here in a few weeks, and you'll be a little bit filled out, two more pounds. There baby. we go. I'll Wouldn't take that them. be awesome? Wouldn't I'll that take be awesome? <laughs> well, it's it, so nice to see you. It is so you. great well, to you. see it's you. And be, I know people, I bet hospital. you y'all hit your DVRs Everybody's today. Everybody's jealous, though, because <laughs> we get to be with you. DVR. And remember, if you want to check out his blog, you can go to my website, and um, it links to Out of the Blue for mm -hmm. cookbooks. That's true, yeah. www.heartofthehomerecipes.com. It's time to say goodbye. No. From North Georgia now today, I'm Sherry Martin. And I'm Angela Burgess, and we don't like to say goodbye, so we'll say see you later. And go Kyle. Yay. This is Hans Rupert. This That's is Sarah, Sarah and Alman. we will see you again only on ETC3, Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 10 a.m., 6 to 7.30 p.m., and 12.30 to 2. I tried that last night, and that didn't work for me. I guys. watched it from the hospital, though, at that time. Did you? Well, I'm, yeah. I'm proud of that. We will see you again only on ETC3. Christ.